Hi everyone, in this lesson we'll be looking at the social and political system of ancient Sparta. The Spartans were very interesting and very unique and one of the things that was really special about them is they actually had two kings. In today's world there is no country on earth that has two kings and even in the ancient world there wasn't many countries that had two kings or many places that had two kings. So this is just one of the things that was special and unique about Sparta. So they were a very interesting people and that's what we'll be looking at today, their social and political uh, system. The political system was based on the great retra, which was like the great speech or great pronunciation by Lycurgus. They had a mixed constitution, they had an assembly, they had an effort, they had the dual kingship, the two kings. And they had the Gerousia, which was a group of 30 men, and the two kings were part of that. The social system. The state ethos taught and maintained through the agogi, that's like their education system. The sesitia, that's their, um, their communal eating. They would eat, the men would eat together in like a, a military mess and the hoplite training and service. The government. The Greek historian Polybius praised the Spartans for having a mixed constitution composed of the best elements. Kingship, oligarchy, and democracy. So they were quite a sophisticated country, weren't they? They had a, a few different things there. Kingship, oligarchy, and democracy. The kings. Sparta has two kings, or they had two kings. The dual kingship was one of the most ancient traditions in Sparta. Kingship was hereditary in Sparta. Aristotle described them as hereditary generals. So uh, Aristotle was actually an Athenian and he was one of the greatest ancient Greek philosophers. And he described the kings as hereditary generals because they inherited their, their kingship, but they were so militaristic, they were like generals as well. A Spartan king was expected to fulfill many roles. He was the chief priest, so he was in charge of religion. He was the commander in chief of the army. That's why Aristotle called them hereditary generals, because he was in charge of the army. The kings were in charge of the army. They were a judge and lawgiver. The effort. There were five magistrates called ephors. One from each oba or territorial region. It's believed their establishment was due to Lycurgus. So once again, he's this great figure in Spartan history who apparently spoke to an oracle and laid down all the laws. And, uh, but some people dispute that. Some people say things might have developed over time. But he's this person who they attribute things to. The ephors were elected. Isn't that amazing? They had democracy over 2,000 years ago there. The Air Force had significant power and exercised control over most aspects of Spartan life. They did the following. They were chief administrators and executives of the state. They advised the kings and kept a check on royal powers. They decided which units would be mobilised in times of war. They called meetings of the Gerousia and the Ecclesia. The Gerousia. It was a council of elders. It consisted of 28 members plus the two kings. So you can see they didn't have one dictator. It's, I, I think it's quite amazing and quite extraordinary because even in the world today, we have countries where there are dictators. But even in Sparta 2000 years ago, they had such a sophisticated system. You know, they were sharing power, sharing decisions. There was two kings. And the two kings were part of this Gerousia, which had 30 people on it. It probably began early in Spartan history as an advisory group to the kings. 
it had considerable influence and prestige. Any Spartan male over the age of 60 could, be, could join it. And once again, I think this is very sophisticated and very interesting. You had to be 60 to be able to join it. Now, even in, even in America today, they, they have a rule that you have to be at least 35 to run for president. So, you know, if they keep that rule, we'll never have a 21-year-old or a 25-year-old as president. But it's just amazing that even in ancient times, they were so smart, they thought, you know, you need to be at least 60 to have the maturity and life experience to be able to run the country. And so, you know, I think it's, it's amazing that they had rules like that. I mean, even America only has a rule that you have to be 35 to run for president. But in practice, those chosen came from a small circle of wealthy, aristocratic families. So technically, anyone over the age of 60 can get on it. But realistically, there was a pool of wealthy, aristocratic families that the men would usually come from. Once chosen, a man held office for life. The General Assembly of Spartan citizens had the right to vote on state matters. But the Gerousia and the king could ignore the vote if it was not to their liking. So even there, there was a bit of democracy, but the final decision left, was left with the king and the Gerousia. The Ecclesia. It was the assembly attended by those over the age of 30 who held full citizenship. So once again, you've got an aged thing, you have to be at least 30, and you had to have full citizenship. They, they met monthly, probably at the time of the full moon. The assembly elected ephors, elders of the Gerousia, and other magistrates. So once again, you have democracy in practice there. Elections going on. It was responsible for the passing measures put before it, such as appointment of military commanders. It voted by acclamation. It could not initiate legislation. So it didn't start its own legislations. The structure of Spartan society. By the fifth century, there were three distinct social classes in Sparta. There was the Spartiates. This is the top group, the homoi. These are the equals, the peers. So they're the top citizens who have the most rights. So if you're gonna live in ancient Sparta, you would wanna be one of them. Then there's the Piroquois. These are the dwellers around. So these are the people who lived um, in the, the, the land around, in Messenia and so on. Then there's the Helots, meaning people captured from the marshes. So these are the people you would not want to be. These were serfs owned by the state. So they were like slaves, but the difference was uh, they were owned by the government. So usually in a lot of slave societies, you have individual people who own the slaves. I mean, in ancient Rome, you, you could go to a slave market and just buy a slave. Um, in America, you had the, the African, you know, the black people uh, who were slaves, and they were just bought by, by others, by other people. But the special thing about Sparta is that the slaves were owned by the government. The main criteria for belonging to the citizen class, or homoi, were ownership of a plot of public land. So if you had a piece of land, you owned it, you could be in the group. The kleros, that's the land. Birth, a full Spartan had to be able to prove that he was descendant from the earliest sons of Heracles or the conquerors. So you had to prove your ancestry and say, not only were you born in Sparta, but your ancestors went back all the way to Heracles or one of the conquerors. Membership in a military mess successful completion of education and military training requirements. That's the agogi. So this gives us a glimpse into the social and political system of ancient Sparta. And I think they were a very sophisticated society. In some ways, they might have been a little bit better than us because they at least had rules about how old you had to be to participate in political affairs. Um, I mean, even in America today, you only have to be 35 and you can technically run for president. Uh, but back then you had to be at least 60 to be in the Gerousia. Um, so maybe that is better. I don't know. Sometimes maybe young people can be 
bright and have good ideas. Maybe you shouldn't have a rule like that. Um, but anyway, those were some of their rules and they had so much democracy um, involved in their system, so many elections and things going on. So I think it's quite an extraordinary that they were so sophisticated and we're not talking about something that, we're not talking about a country today, we're not talking about a country 100 years ago. We're talking about a society that existed over 2,000 years ago. And they were having these kings, these magistrates, these elections, all this was going on back then. So I think it's quite amazing. Music